Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're going to talk about microscopes for the fish hobbyists. We're going to show you how to select one, how to use it and what to search for when you're examining fish. So we've got a range of microscopes here, something for that's a, the beginner, intermediate and professional levels. So we're just going to talk about uh, the beginner's microscope to start with. So in this microscope, uh, most of us aren't born to look down a, an eyepiece. Uh, most of us are, sort of grow up watching TV and so a TV type screen, a computer screen, a monitor uh, that is able to show you what's down in the microscope is very helpful for beginners. Uh, in this microscope also features uh, three objectives on the nose piece. So um, we've got the four times magnification, 10 and 40 times magnification. And with these, you should be able to pick up almost every common disease that's known to fish. So how to use this microscope? Basically you need a power supply uh, with a cord and you put your slide onto the stage and you've got this clamp to hold it in place and you've got these stage control knobs that moves the slide left to right, uh, forwards and backwards. Uh, you've also got this control um, focus so you, uh, you can focus on the specimen that's under your microscope. You've got um, illumination, most microscopes are illuminated from the bottom so you're able to see things uh, with the light shining through it uh, but this microscope also has uh, illumination from the top so if the objects, for example if you're looking at feces or something that's really large and thick that doesn't allow light to penetrate um, then the above sort of the illumination from the top uh, is much uh, will work better in that case um, it's also got uh, light control so you can increase the intensity of the light that's coming through so something like this you can probably pick up for about between one to two hundred US dollars one of the disadvantages of having uh, these sort of systems is that uh, the field of view that you get down the microscope is actually going to be smaller uh, than when you're viewing directly down the eyepiece. And the other thing with this is that the base is a little bit small so uh, it can wobble around a little bit. So that's a little bit annoying but I guess you can live with that. And now we're going to talk about this microscope. This is uh, what's known as a monocular microscope because it's only got a one eyepiece. This is the exact same model that I use in the field. Um, it's got a power source through the um, power point Plus, it's got a rechargeable battery inside as well. So when you're using these microscopes in the field, um, it means that you don't have to deal with uh, dangerous electrical cables around or near water. And with this one, um, you'll see is that the nose piece has an additional um, objective. So it's got the standard 4, 10, and 40 times magnification, but it also has the 100. Uh, the 100 is not really used in the field, um, but it's used mainly to look for bacteria. But for all intents and purposes, for the home aquarius, um, all you need is the 4, 10 and 40 times. Other features for this microscope is that the um, control, uh, stage control knobs are, is operable by just one hand. And the focus as well, you've got the coarse control and the fine focus. And the other thing as well, it's got this swivel head. The other features for this microscope is that we've got the iris diaphragm uh, and also the condenser. And this will help you to be able to visualize things more in 3D or for flat type uh, samples. And a microscope like this would probably set you back around between the five to 1,000 US dollar mark. And this is very good for field work. Okay, so next we're going to be showing you uh, what I use professionally for uh, laboratory testing of histology slides. So this is actually a trinocular microscope and basically it's got the two eyepieces for the binocular microscope but it's got this uh, feature as well where you can actually put a, a camera, a microscope camera making it trinocular. But for uh, the purpose of this video, we're just going to treat it like a standard binocular microscope. And this has got all the same features as what i just shown you. Uh, the reason why it's got two eyepieces is that if you are going to spend hours behind a microscope, you don't want to get your eyes tired 
uh, so you want to be able to use both eyes uh, but if you have got astigmatism uh, you won't be able to use both eyes anyway so a monocular would be would do just as well so with this microscope um, it is a lot heavier because a sturdy base will give you uh, better control over all the small things that you're trying to look for this one is good enough for my hist histopathology work this would this cost you between one and a half to two thousand US. So how do we prepare our samples for examining? Basically you need a glass slide and a cover slip. So basically what we do is we put the sample there with a drop of water, put the glass slide cover slip right over the top, press it down, make sure it's dry and then we'll put it down under the microscope and be able to examine it this way. It's very important though uh, depending on the material that you're testing, if you're doing fecal samples, uh, you want to press it down such that uh, it, it squishes or s smashes things um, widely apart so that it's thin and allows the light to penetrate through uh, from the bottom uh, into the eyepiece. Whereas if you're doing a skin mucus scrape, uh, what I normally do is after scraping the fish with the edge of the cover slip, I just place it on top of the droplet of water and just leave it as that and then when you're examining we're just going up and down that edge where the mucus is uh, some people like to spread it around uh, but and make it nice and thin like we do with fecal samples but i find that there's just a lot more surface area that you need to scan around to look for the parasites with the gill samples uh, again you put a droplet of water and then you take your gill biopsy, place it into the droplet of water and with your cover slip, you put it on top and you'll be able to examine it that way. And the reason why you use a cover slip is so that it forms a nice even surface um, at the right height uh, so that when you're scanning around using the um, stage control knobs, uh, your focal length or the field of view is not going to change too much uh, so you don't need to constantly have to readjust the focus level next we're going to show you how I take samples from fish and then we're going to show you some of the diseases and parasites that you can actually look for in your fish using a microscope this is a video of Kostya from a skin scrape of a koi this is viewed at 400 times magnification which is using your 40 times objective and also your 10 times eyepiece lens. On the left is the host cells and all these things buzzing around are the flagellated protozoa known as costia. Here's a skin scraping of white spot disease. Uh, freshwater white spot will have this horseshoe shaped nucleus um, as you can see here. This is at 100 times magnification. Normally with the white spots you can see them visibly with your naked eye but here you can see the intricacies of the parasites. And here what I'm pointing at are smaller uh, versions of the white spot disease uh, as they move around and graze on the fish uh, skin and mucus it causes intense irritation next we're looking at trichodina these are ciliated protozoal organisms um, they're not primary pathogens but in numbers such as this as this is a skin scrape from a koi um, they can cause severe irritation this is viewed at a hundred times magnification. And this large organism here is a skin flea. You can see the huge haptos, the anchor or the hooks there. And in the center you can see more hooks and this belongs to the embryo that's inside this worm. So this is a skin flea known as gyrodactylus and the primary pathogens is very bad news for your fish. Now we're looking at fecal samples from a cichlid and you can have a look here we've got oval shaped eggs belonging to the capillaria intestinal nematode worm and we're focusing in and out of the plane so you can actually reveal there are actually more the eggs there so here we can see at least three eggs. Now we're looking at gills from a goldfish and you can see these worms on them they are known as gill flukes, dactylogyrus is their scientific name this is viewed at four times magnification. So, thank you for watching. We hope you've 
found the video is very interesting and useful, please make sure you subscribe to get updates of our latest videos and have a fantastic week.